Hi, it's Jo. I'm here again today with a video for Through the Craft Room Door magazine. This is a crafting publication by Colleen Holmes. I hope you'll enjoy your video today. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a type of clay out of uh, some general household items that you probably already have sitting around, including something from your kitchen. So let me just give you a quick look at what we're going to be creating. These can be used for embellishments. Bring this up so you can see this. For your cards, for your projects, you can put them on um, little wooden boxes, Oops, whatever you choose. Here's what we're going to concentrate mainly on making today is probably the rows. Um, this might be a little bit longer video than normal, so it won't um, hold up too long at showing you all this. Let me just give you a quick peek. Trying to get it to focus in here a little bit better. And this is a cute one. This is the cow lily. It's kind of hard to see. Sorry about that. And then this is actually like um, a pebble type of thing you can have it look like. And using a rubber stamp and putting the impression into the dough. Um, this is actually uh, still a little bit damp because I just did this earlier, but this would be a cute little project. Now, let me show you the supplies we're going to be using. And yes, some of them will be going, what? Some simple dollar store white glue. You don't necessarily have to use this if you want to use the Elmer's glue or you can use like something like the Lane's Tacky glue. Um, you will want to experiment depending on the type of glue that you use as to what you're going to use um, for the ratio of glue versus your other products. So we'll go into that a little bit more. I'm going to just grab one of my bottles out of here. This is, I got two bottles for a dollar, so you can't really beat that as far as supplies. Then I would highly recommend, because you are going to get a little bit messy, some um, type of hand protection, especially if you have a manicure and you definitely want to take your jewelry off your rings things like that. You're also going to need just some various colors of acrylic paint. I've got like some greens and pinks and yes you will need white. A little bit of some type of a hand cream. I'm just going to use a little bit from an um, Avon bottle I have. Uh, a spoon and some type of an old plastic container, something that you're not too worried about if you have to chuck it. And then the main ingredient, surprisingly, this I bought at the dollar store as well, is white bread. And um, I know that sounds funny, but the recipe is something that was called bread dough roses. This goes way, way back into the 1980s. Um, as far as making these, I've kind of like messed around with the um, formula a little bit uh, using this type of glue rather than the tacky glue that was originally designed for. So what we're going to do to get started, and I, I'll go ahead and break up the bread first. Now the recipe I'm using, I'm going to be using two slices of bread. Get that out of the way. And what you want to do is just first of all is peel the crust off the bread. Yeah, I know there's probably a lot of people that did this anyhow as a kid. They didn't like the crust, whatever. But anyway, you will need to take the crust off the bread. You don't need that. And chuck that. And then you're going to break up your bread into small pieces. Okay, I know this is probably going to be boring for you. So just break it up into some pieces like you're going to be feeding the birds or something. Okay, and we're going to do the second piece as well. I'm going to get rid of this crust. I'm not going to be real careful about it, but like I said, you'll want to cover your workspace and you'll probably want to use some sort of gloves unless you like getting messy. One other thing you'll want to have on hand is some kind of a good sealing bag because that's what you're going to use to keep your um, dough uh, soft because like I said, it is an air dry and if you leave it out, you're going to have a one clump of a rock. 
So let's see, we've got this all taken care of now. So my next step is going to be using the glue. But first I'm going to go ahead and quickly, quickly try and get these gloves on. Sometimes they don't always cooperate. Actually, these two I think I picked up at the dollar store. Amazing little place, what you can find. I don't want to tour a little bit, but that's okay. Okay, roll your sleeves up. Now you're going to take your glue. No, I'm just going to take the hot lid off. Now, since I've got two pieces of bread in here, I'm going to use about three of these little teaspoons of glue. It doesn't have to be perfect. Two. And there's about three. Now, as I said, the ratio when I learned was one tablespoon of a ta the tacky glue and one piece of bread. With this being thinner, I had to increase the bread. Okay, so I'm going to stir that around just a little bit to get it mixed in. Now I'm going to give it a squirt of hand cream. And please don't ask me why. I have no idea. It's just part of the recipe. It called for cold cream, but you can use hand cream as well. Or at least it's worked for me. Okay, so I'm going to just, as you can see, I'm kind of mixing it together until it starts sticking into kind of like a ball. And this is where it's going to get messy, and it does take a little bit of time, so you have to be patient. So now I'm going to take this big clump, put my bowl aside, and now the next part is, and I'm going to see, maybe hopefully I can speed this up to the point that it's going to make. If you want, add a little bit of your cream on your hands before doing this. Okay, now at some point, what you're going to want to do is add the color to it. Now, you can use the acrylic paints. I'm taking a wild guess. I haven't tried it, so try it at your own risk. Is using um, like inks, reinkers. I don't know what it would do. I don't know the reaction it would have with the glue and the bread. My guess is food coloring would be fine, but I would highly recommend if you're going to do ink or food coloring, definitely put the gloves on. You can start out with just a little bit, as you can see. And this actually will help take a little bit of the stickiness away too. And this is where you want to make sure you're kneading this color in because right now it's kind of on the surface. Let me see. I think you can probably see that where it's not really mixed in. You want to get it mixed in real well because this is what's going to give you your color. And this probably won't be dark enough for the first time. You'll want to go ahead and keep mixing and mixing and mixing. Like I said, it's going to take a good five minutes, maybe even longer, to really get the dough that you want and the color that you want. And for some reason, why, I don't know, but it seems like the lighter colors take longer. Now, the reason I have white here and I said you'll want white, yes, the dough kind of looks white. It is white bread, but the problem is when it dries, it kind of becomes a little bit translucent, grayish looking, and that really doesn't make for a pretty rose at all. Um, what you want to do is, the whole thing behind this is they're going to look and even have a feel almost of porcelain. So just keep that in mind. And as we go into making the actual roses, I'll go into a little bit more in detail. Is you want to take your baggie and you want to put it in your baggie or your whatever you're using for sealing your dough up. So get that in there, seal it up, leave it sealed up. 
it needs to rust anyway. So even if I did have it to the pink I wanted, I wouldn't use it yet. I would be waiting and um, giving it a good five, 10 minutes rest after you did all that rubbing and stuff on it. But for time's sake, we have lots of dough to work with. And it's all sealed up. I have some yellow, I have my white, and I have my green. So I think what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and work with the white. Now, what you're gonna do, you're gonna work, and even this, because I've had this made for a few days now, it's actually starting to toughen up. It reminds you of um, uh, Silly Putty. So I'm just gonna give it a need, and you see it's not sticking to my hands like it would have um, the other dough because it's it's been kneaded and it's rested and everything else. So let's just get it warmed up some. And it does soften. Now, as far as uh, lifespan, mm, a few days. Uh, I've had this made up for probably three, four days now, and we're still doing good. You can put it in the refrigerator. I think they say about two weeks in the refrigerator. So maybe a week in a sealed container. I mean, if you start seeing something funky happen to it, you'll definitely want to get rid of it. Because after all, it is bread, but once it dries, it's it's kind of reminds you of the very old ornaments maybe you might have made as a child, the um, salt dough or something like that. Now what I'm going to do to start off with, I'm going to take a small pinch off because I'm really just wanting to create a tiny, tiny pea-like size or even smaller of a ball. Even this is a little bit big. I don't know if you can see that. Um, no, let me give it to you against the cap so you can see size-wise. I want to go smaller, so I'm going to take about half of that. I'm going to put the other piece in this bag because again, look, if you leave it out for any length of time, it will start to harden. So now that I have that in a pea size, little round ball, I'm going to pinch. So I'm going to smoosh it. Okay, that's not thin enough, not even close. You're just going to keep smooshing it. This is why I said you have, you know, you don't want a really big, big piece because you're making it really thin, almost to the point of paper thin. I'm trying to stay up close to the camera and hope that you can see how thin I'm getting this. You want to kind of keep it uniform in, in, in the shape. Okay, this is pretty good. I don't know if you can actually see that, how thin that is. All right, so here's how you start your ropes really simple and if you mess up scrunch it back and start over again so now that we have our little piece oops I'm off camera here okay you're gonna take and you're gonna roll that just rolling it lightly in don't press too hard yet okay did you see how I did that now I have a toothpick you can use your fingers I actually prefer using my fingers to do this next part but what you want to do is you're going to take and gently turn these pieces down just a little bit because you're creating the inside part of your bud of your rose. So you see how we have that now? I'm going to bring that up a little bit and that's curved out. And like I said, you can use a little toothpick or something of that nature to help guide you if you like or you know if you have um, really long nails or something like that or you know that you just feel more comfortable doing it that way but that's your first piece so now what you're going to do is again I'm keeping everything sealed in my baggie I'm going to grab that little ball I just threw back in there and one more time and we're going to pinch and then I'm just going to flatten it out kind of like a pizza pie. But you want it very thin. Whoops. And yes, it'll fall out of your hand. Okay. Okay. So now that I have this very thin again, 
very, very thin. I'm going to now take my piece that I just made and right here where that curve starts, that's where I'm going to lay this piece and I want to keep it even at the top with this piece. So you want to kind of eyeball it. You're just going to lightly wrap it around again, sort of doing the same motion. And again, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to peel it back just a little bit. And a good suggestion would be is if you're doing this in a time that you have the real roses out in bloom, take a look at them or, you know, Google it and see what you can find. But you'll see here's the start of our rose. And you're going to continue to do that depending on how big you want your rose to be. If you just want it to be like small like this with a little rosebud, that's fine. If you want to get it to be a little bit bigger, um, kind of like this one where I've created more um, layers to it, you can. It's completely up to you. And you can tell that this one I did very tiny. I think it's fun to see how tiny you can make them. But now let's jump over to making the cow lily. Very, very simple, super simple. You'll want some sort of either a wire or a toothpick. And this is the dough that I've tinted to be yellow. And with cow lilies, they have that little yellow center, depending on how big you're going to make it and how much dough you're going to need. So with this, I'm just taking a piece of dough. I'm going to try and make it as smooth as possible. Okay, so now I'm going to start forming that longer, um, I guess, I, in a cow lily, I guess it's considered a stamen. I'm not positive, so don't hold me to it. So I'm creating that. And I'm going to take and put the little um, toothpick end and form that kind of around it. Now you can create texture on this if you want by using your toothpick and just kind of tapping it all around because they do have a little bit of texture. But for time's sake, we'll not do all that. So I have that on there. Kind of looks like a piece of corn. It's going to be a corn dog or something. And now I'm going to take a small piece of white. And you'd want the ratio to be, you know, in conjunction with the size of your calla lily um, centerpiece. So I'm doing exactly the same thing. I created another ball and now I'm going to be pressing it out. And you can see I've made this one kind of big. Uh, I think it's going to be a little bit too big. So we'll take a little bit of that off. I'll put it back into a ball and start it for. Press it out. The thinner you get it, the more porcelain like it's going to be. So you kind of have to remember that. Still keeping it relatively in the shape. I mean, it's not a perfect circle, but then nothing in, in you know, nature is going to be perfect. This one I may have created a little bit thicker, but that's okay. I'll give you the idea of what we're going to do. We're going to do exactly the same thing. You're going to lay this kind of right down into the center and wrap it. Bring that around. Wrap that. And if you need to bring that up a little bit, you can. And now the same thing. You're going to start just kind of folding it back. And that created your lily, or your calla lily. So, let me show you real quick as far as um, doing the stamping on to a piece of this. And I'll go ahead and use the yellow for that. Just imagine all the different things you can create with this. I mean, you don't have to limit yourself to making flowers. So I'm taking a relatively good size um, portion of this uh, bread dough and I'm just making it into a kind of semi-flat ball. I'm going to remove this piece of white just because I want to have it on this surface here. So I've got it about that big. Yes, my stamp is bigger, but that's okay. And here's my stamp I'm going to use. It is of a kind of a, a conflower. 
I'm just going to take some ink. I'm just using a chalk ink. You could use a pigment ink. Um, it's just I like this tangerine color. Got a little bit too much there. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and do this as best as possible. I'm going to start with this and pushing the stamp and trying to do it evenly but yet while spreading the dough. Okay, now it's going to stick. And now, you see it's kind of stuck to the stamp, but that's why we applied the um, ink. You see, it doesn't do anything. I would still wash your stamp off. Now, this one I didn't get quite centered because I couldn't stand up and do it as well. But you'll see how it um, just embeds right into the dough. And you could do this. You do this with, if you wanted to. Um, I don't know. Maybe you have an old, old coin that's out of circulation and you just want to create an impression with it or um, a charm or something like that. And you just want to do that. Now this one, as you can tell, it's starting to get a little bit harder. This one, of course, if you push, you can, you know, bend it. Now that's another option. You could bend this a little bit so it kind of pops out like that. But what you're going to do is you're going to want to let this dry. Now, <laughs> these are real soft. And you see how we have this cone shape now down at the bottom? You probably don't want that if you're going to be using these as embellishments on your cards because you're going to want something that's going to be flatter. So what you'll want to do is, while it's still damp, be very careful, but take a pair of scissors and just trim that down so that it creates kind of a flatness to it and allow that to dry. Because if you try and cut them after they've dried, it's not going to work. Um, I tried to do this one while it was uh, hard now, and it just basically shattered. And this is what I mean. If you try and cut it, it just kind of breaks all apart. Um, but these are pretty rock solid. You hear that? Okay. And now, like this one here, of course, it's not doing anything because it's still wet. But um, that's all you really need to do. You just need your bread and whatever your glue is going to be that you're going to work with. You probably want to experiment with it. What I did um, when I first started doing it uh, with it, this recipe, I put in one piece of bread and I did three spoons of the glue way too much. That's when I added a second piece of bread. If you want to go with this type of glue, which is relatively thin, um, you could try one piece of bread and maybe one, one and a half spoonfuls of the glue. If you're using, again, the tacky glue, I think it comes like in a gold container, um, one piece of bread to one tablespoon of glue is the ratio along with your hand cream or cold cream. So I hope you've enjoyed this and that you'll try it and we would love to see some of your creations that you've uh, come up with. Again, this little one here, I used my Copic airbrush and was able to airbrush it. This started out to be one of the white pieces just like this. So you can see you can actually color them and it sticks just fine. And same thing creating your leaves, you can do the same thing. So thanks for coming by today and checking out the video and see you again soon. Thanks.